this is Brock Meyer with another word of encouragement for you. And today, I want to talk to you about the beauty of communion. A couple ways that we look back on communion to really get a historical view, we first look at Passover. Passover is this powerful thing that happens whenever there was this moment when God was coming through to free his people from Egypt, to free the Israelites from Egypt. And, and there's this firstborn that comes out whose name is Moses. And Moses, while the, the Pharaoh during the time was killing and wiping out all of the firstborn males, Moses' mama puts him in a basket and sends him down the Nile River. He then is saved by Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, and he's raised in that sort of a kingdom. And years later, God calls him to go back and free his people, the Israelites from Egypt. And as he goes to Pharaoh, he says, I want you to let all the Israelites go. Pharaoh says, I don't like that idea. I kind of like having this many people here to serve me. So we'll just keep them right here. God then begins to release 10 plagues. It was blood and frogs and gnats and flies and locusts and all of this sort of thing started happening. And the last one was God was then taking their firstborn. And he says, if you will sacrifice a lamb, prepare it for your family, eat all of it, and use the blood and cover your doorpost, coming down both frames and over the top of your door frame. Then when an angel comes through, a death angel passes through, it'll pass over your house instead of coming into your house to wipe out the firstborn. This was the attempt to try to move Pharaoh's heart to let the people go. However, Pharaoh's heart had been hardened. And so this Passover thing was the original kind of uh, uh, thing that we see of taking on this communion to, to take on that lamb sacrifice was through this Passover. Still today, they, they honor Passover in the month of Nisan. It's not a car, it's actually a month. It's the first month of spring, which we recognize as April, somewhere around April 15th is when they celebrate Passover. And still today, and starting back then, Jews would always make the trek back to Jerusalem three times a year for three different mega festivals and for these dinners. One is Passover, another is Pentecost, and another is the Feast of Tabernacles. And they would come back for Passover, and this was the moment whenever the, the priest would come to the highest place on the temple and would sacrifice a lamb. And this was the, the moment that everybody would come back for. We fast forward the tape, all of these these years forward, and we see this man named Jesus. Jesus, who is the firstborn, of, firstborn among many brothers, Colossians chapter 1 says, or as John the Baptist, when John the Baptist saw him coming, he said, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Here we see the firstborn is back, and we see the Lamb is here, and as Jesus has his triumphal entry into uh, Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. He does this whole week of miracles and everybody's excited and fired up. And he talks to his disciples and he says, guys, I can't wait to share the Passover meal with you. I want to celebrate this awesome thing. And as they're sitting in the upper room and Jesus is having Passover with his disciples, he says this, he says, man, I want you to take in what I'm doing here. And he takes this loaf of bread and he breaks the bread and he blesses it in Luke chapter 22. And he passes it around and, and then he takes the, the cup of wine and he says, this is my blood. It's being poured out for you. And this bread is like my body that's being broken for you. And man, I want you to take this and, and eat this and to do this in remembrance of me. What would happen during Passover, during this whole week of the festival, Every day at 9 a.m. and 3 p.m., the priest would go into the temple and they would sacrifice the lamb. And there was someone who would, who would blast a ram's horn, a shofar, 
And as they would blast this horn, it would sound like that. And an echo would go throughout the city. And everyone would become deathly silent. This is a million people coming back to Jerusalem. And they're here for this celebration of Passover. But whenever the, the shofar was sounded, everybody got quiet. The priest would go, would make this sacrifice, and then you would know that the sacrifice had been made that day. And then everybody kind of goes back to hustle and bustle and kind of fun and engaging with your family and friends and just continue to celebrate. And then it would happen again at 3 p.m. And at 3 p.m., and the priest makes the sacrifice, and they go about the day. So after Jesus serves communion with his disciples, it wasn't too long after that that Jesus is arrested. He's taken into this illegal trial, and he is beaten beyond recognition all night and into the morning. It's now 9 a.m., and as there is a hush that comes over the whole city, there are three men outside of town, went down the little path of the Via Della Rosa, about 600 yards outside of town. They're hanging on a cross. And that shofar sounds again. And these men are raised up. We know that Jesus being the one in the middle. And here they are for six hours, hanging, pinned. The Lamb of God, the firstborn among many, is hanging here on the cross. And as the the earth becomes dark and the lights begin to go out. It now is into the third watch here and it's 3 p.m. in the afternoon. The priest goes up to make the sacrifice and here comes a shofar. And everybody's quiet. And just beyond the walls of the city, you hear this voice cry out above all of the silence. It is finished. The Lamb of God is sacrificed. He says, Nish Leon, which is like, it, it means it is finished, but it's like a, an accountant term, which means the debt has been paid in full. And to end Passover with an exclamation point is the ultimate Lamb of God, making the pure without blemish, spotless sacrifice for the remission of sin. Jesus paid it all. And he said, do this and remember the sacrifice that I've made. The beauty of communion is that we get this arena. We get this platform and this setup to come and encounter the sacrificial lamb that can cleanse us and wash our sins away. And it no longer literally is an animal of a lamb, but it is the perfect son of God. We honor this, this initiative that Jesus put into place to take this communion, to remember what I've done, to just kind of sit in this for just a moment. And so if there's ever times that we can create fun little atmospheres that's going to trigger our, our memories. It's going to move our hearts to what Jesus has done for us to sacrifice. We want to dive into those. And one that he's done is the sacrament of communion. I hope that as you take the bread and the wine, that you are so mindful of the sacrifice that Jesus has done to cleanse us of our sin, to make us new and holy. Enjoy this wonderful gift. For some people, they call it communion. For others, they call it Eucharist. The word Eucharist is two words. It is you, meaning good. And gift is the charis. You, charis. It means it's the good gift. So, please enjoy the good gift as you get your heart right before Jesus. Enjoy it today.